so we were almost done with the chemical reaction of aldehyde and ketones and i would like to uh, remind you a reaction that is very important in aldehyde and ketones and that is the first chemical reaction of aldehyde and ketones and that is your nucleophilic addition reaction nucleophilic addition reaction as you can see uh, nucleophil uh, nucleophile will attack like if i'm uh, if i'm gonna explain this in this way you can see this is out of the boat and this is out, uh, inside the boat so this is like this and if any nucleophile that is wetting you can see what will happen here oxygen is more electronegative element so it will withdraw electron from carbon so there will be negative and then there will be positive charge now you can see electrophilic center is at this carbon so it will be attacking at carbon and you will be getting uh, what we say uh, an intermediate you can call it will be like this see O negative is there nucleophile is here and A is here and then B is as it is B is as it is now after this you can see the next reaction uh, in the presence of H plus what will happen this H plus will be directly going to OH and the rest part will be as it is. So this is the basic reaction of nucleophilic addition reaction. This will be slow that's why this step will be RDS rate determining and this will be fast. So um, I have made some reaction uh, parallel reaction in which a lot of reactions will be involved along with a lot of what we say a reagent so before that i would like to ask a question about this nucleophilic addition reaction there is an aldehyde and then there is an there is a ketone so can anyone tell me in which the reactivity will be higher or nucleophilic addition reaction in aldehyde or ketone what do you think aldehyde so it's very easy it will be an aldehyde why aldehyde so as you know that in aldehyde there will be less esteric hindrance as compared to ketone because in ketone we have alkyl group on the both side but in aldehyde there is hydrogen and one side alkyl group so there will be less esteric hindrance that's why aldehyde will be more reactive towards this reaction as compared to ketone now i would like to ask you a question about this that is <laughs> this nucleophilic addition reaction if i'm gonna ask you a question can you tell me this reaction everyone knows the common name of this hydroxyl compound that is glycol and this reaction is in the presence of hcl gas and dilute hcl please do it
So see, I'm going to explain this to you then. And that is basically uh, this O and this hydrogen will be eliminated. That means H2O will be eliminated from this reaction and see how the reaction will take place. R, C and C and then this O will be connecting with this and then H2. Then again O and then this H2. Ethylene, what its name is, we can call it ethylene glycol ketal. Ethylene glycol ketal. So this is also the part of nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. Is that clear, Marita? Krishna yes, Rehan? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now coming to the reaction part that I would like to give you. Just wait a minute, please. Let's start. There is a benzaldehyde. This is your benzaldehyde. And you are going to react this benzaldehyde with CH three MgBr followed by H plus. That means hydrolysis you are going to do in the presence of acid. You will be getting A. After this, A you are going to treat this with PCC. PCC. That means pyridinium dichlorochromate. Then you will be getting B. After getting B. You are going to treat this with I2NaOH, then you will be getting C. And C is basically your yellow PPT. C is basically yellow PPT. You are going to tell me A, B, C, D. Just let me write it here C. And C, you need to tell me about the yellow PPT. This type of reactions will cover all the reagents and it will be helpful for us. Mm, that's good, MJ. I'm going to write the next question I'm going
any answer for A? That means first question. Kevin? Yes, I'm sending. No, okay. Rayan, are you able to solve the question? Adriel, Priya, Hamza? Good, very good. A is good, Rehan. Go for the B. Will it be L or on? KV, will it be aldehyde for B or keto? My, my bad, sir. It's on. I wrote it. Yeah. KL. I'm just going to uh, show you the reaction. You can see there will be negative, there will be positive. And here there will be negative, there will be positive. So it will be attacking here. And you will be getting this. Wait a minute. Let me show you in more explained way. So you can see this will be like this. CH and then CH3 will be there. O negative, MG positive, and BR. And after doing the hydrolysis, you will be getting this. You will be getting C, uh, CH and then OH is there, and also CH3 is there. After passing this through PCC pyridinium dichlorochromate, chlorochromate, which means it is an oxidizing agent. So this Secondary alcohol will be oxidized. This secondary alcohol will be oxidized into ketone. And this is your iodo form test. So, uh, sorry, halo form test. And always remember that this is very important. Always remember that this halo form test will be shown by methyl ketone. That means a ketone in which after this functional group, there should be a methyl or it can be shown by an alcohol like uh, methyl alcohol you can call it or also it is shown by ethanol this is very important generally a student forgets but also remember that haloform test is also given by ethanol and an alcohol like this you can see the oh group to the oh group at so uh, at least one ch3 methyl group should be there and this is methyl ketone so what will happen there, this CH3 will be converted directly into, since this is your I2, so it will be converted into iodo form, which is yellow in color. And this part, the rest part, this part, left hand side part will be carboxylate anion. The carboxylate anion. This will be like this, C double bond O and then O negative. And NA positive you can write if you want. So I think... Uh, Priya, uh, Priya, I didn't get any answer from you. B benzyl dehyde. Very good. B benzyl D benzyl dehyde. No. Adriel B is not benzyl dehyde. Have you got it, Adriel? Yes, sir. I'm in ketone. Okay. 
please do this reaction. So what function does this do? Basically, it will uh, uh, it will create a carbocation. H plus will create a carbocation. H3PO4 is an acid, so that it will create a carbocation. So you can see at alkene, there is two possibility of carbocation. One is here and another is here. And if you know which one is more stable. And then this benzene will be combining with this and it will form something like, you will see. Should I explain? Okay, let's see. So what will happen? There will be formation of carbocation here. And this benzene will come in contact with this and it will create now it will form a compound like this the a will be you can see this will be like this and this will be a formation of carbocation took place from here one of the hydrogen will go out in the form of h plus so there will be negative charge and this negative charge will be attracting this so it will form this so this is your A. As you can see, you are using KMnO4 on this, KMnO4 and heating, KMnO4. Then what will happen if there is any hydrogen on this carbon, it will be directly converted into benzoic acid. If you remember the preparation of carboxylic acid, this will be directly converted into benzoic acid. That's why this is your B and this is your A. Now come to this. If you are going to, this is your A. Always remember that. If you are going to treat this with HNO3 and H2SO4, what will happen? There will be formation of an electrophile that is NO2 plus. And this NO2 plus is directly going on para because this is the stable position. So C is basically your uh, C is what I want to say is that this is your NO2 and the rest part will be as it is now this c is going to be treated with this first sn hcl this is basically reduction of nitro group into amine so this will be converted into first this will be converted into no2 will be converted into amine that is nh2 and the rest part will be as it is the rest part will be as it is and then you are going to treat this with NaNO2, the second NaNO2 in the presence of HCl, that means a nitrous acid. And when NaNO2 in the presence of HCl is going to react with amine, it will form benzene diazon diazonium, basically. Benzene diazonium. So you can see this will be converted into N2 plus Cl minus benzene diazonium chloride. And the rest part will be as it is. And this is your D. This is your D. Now, after getting D, you are going to react this D with aniline. <laughs> you are going to react this D with aniline. So this is your coupling reaction. I'm going to show you. Uh, are you writing? Please do write it and then I will show you the E part. So can you explain A again? A. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, just uh, first write it, then I will again explain it. Okay. Just let me know when you are done with this. Tomorrow is our last class. When is your paper? Uh, uh, Jainan's paper, KV Adriel. Uh, everyone, please do send a message. Sir, I didn't get it yet. Now, uh, what? Sir, I didn't get it yet. Oh. Done, sir. Done. Okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, you were talking about A, so I'm going to explain it here. I'm going to erase this. So you can see there is formation of carbocation here. Yes or no? Yes, sir. See what will happen. There is formation of carbocation here and there is benzene. There is benzene. There is a negative charge. And you know that benzene has an, uh, every carbon has one hydrogen. So what will happen? This will be given by this. 
So there will be H positive and this H positive will be going to this. So it becomes like this negative charge uh, completed. Negative satisfied by this positive. Now you can see there is a negative charge at this carbon. So this carbon, which has a negative charge, they will combine to form a product like this. You can see. This is a carbon. This is also a carbon. This is also a carbon. So they will combine each with each other and they will form this. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So I was talking about the diazonium. So you can see this is the D product that I'm going to write it like this. This is the D product. And there is N2 plus Cl minus. And you are going to react this with aniline and I'm going to write the aniline as well like this. NH2. What will happen? You know that this is a coupling reaction in which diazonium or N2 group will retain in it. So you are going to remove all the other group from here and let N2 be there. Like this. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So this is your main, uh, coupling reagent. So you have to, after watching the reagent, you have to know what type of reaction it is going to show. Oh, wait a minute. I just did it wrongly in a wrong way. N2 plus is there. So wait a minute, please. So this is plus and then NH2 is there. So they will combine together. They will combine together to form like this. There is a hydrogen, so they will be out and the rest part is as it is. This NH2 will be retained here. So this will be the product. And it's a very important reaction. Please do let me know when you are done with this. Uh, MJ, uh, the paper that you are going to give for Jane means uh, on which date it is? So I didn't get my date yet. Oh, you people didn't get any admit card? No, sir. Okay. Got it, I will know. Now I'm going to give you the next. CH3, C triple bond, C and then CH. And you are going to treat this with H2 in the presence of palladium, barium sulfate. Then you will be getting A. After getting A, you are going to do O3 in the presence of ZN followed by CH3, C double OH, ethanoic acid. Then you will be getting B. After getting B, you are going to treat this with AgNO3 in the presence of NH4OH. Then you are get, going to get C precipitate. And you are going to tell me what is this C?
let me know when you are done with this. Everyone is able to see the screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good, MJ. What about A? Uh, please do tell me about A also. And B? B is what? Very good, PD. Very good, MJ. Any answer from Adriel, Hamza, Krishna, and Rehan? So, see, this H2PD in the presence of BSO4 is a reducing agent and it gives you cis alkene from alkyne so you are going to break this and hydrogen adding on the both side same side basically same side so you will be getting this product you will be getting this as a this is your a and you are going to use o3 in the presence o3 zn in the presence of ch3 coh this is your reductive ozonolysis reductive ozonolysis so reductive ozonolysis, we, oh, what it will do, it's very simple. You are going to break and add O to the both carbon. So you will be getting ethanol, two mole of ethanol. This is also ethanol. This is also ethanol. Two mole of ethanol. And this ethanol, if you are going to pass this through, this reagent, which is tolerance reagent, what it will do? It will basically oxidize this ethanol into carboxylate anion and this ag plus will be converted into ag metal silver silver which is shiny so this will be your ppt precipitate and as you can see this is your c answer there are two type of ozonolysis one is reductive and another is oxidative in oxidative ozonolysis if you have aldehyde this will be again oxidized to carboxylic acid. Always remember that. If you will, get, if this was, uh, if this will be the uh, oxidative ozonolysis, then what will happen? This aldehyde will be automatically converted into carboxylic acid. Is that clear? And what is ox oxidative? This is your carboxylic acid at the place of this. If you are getting hydrogen peroxide, then it will be oxidative ozonolysis. Can I change the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm going to give you a last question. second last question then we will move to the chemical equilibrium which is a very small and very easy first you are going to treat this with bh3 in the presence of thf tetrahydrofeban and then you are going to treat this with hydrogen peroxide in the presence of sodium hydroxide then you will be getting a after this, you are going to treat this A with, first you are going to treat this with Na and then you are going to treat this with CH3I. Then you are getting B. 
after getting b you are going to treat this b with h i hydrogen iodide you will be getting c plus d and d should be blue color in victor mayer test so first of all you have to know what is this blue color in victor mayer test which compound shows so alcohol with 2 degree i just gave you with the hint very good mj uh if any students is not able to solve this or think about the reaction just let me know i will do help for you very good that is yes 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 very good adriel but try to write the name of the compound mm -hmm. very good mj that's good okay let's start i'm going to explain it as you can see this is your alkene and this is what bh3 thf as to or to in the presence of base this is your hydroboration oxidation preparation of alcohol from alkene hydroboration oxidation and it follows anti marconi co it follows anti marconi co we have two parts from this 
one is h plus and another is oh minus so what will happen h will uh, given by this bh3 and oh minus given by this base so in anti marconico negative part will go to that carbon along double bond which has greater number of hydrogen and this will go to the carbon which has lesser number of hydrogen so you can see this will be your ch3 and hydrogen will be added here and then this will be converted into single bond and oh will be added here and this will be your ch3 so the name of the compound one two three four name of the compound will be three methyl then comes your but in two all so instead of writing this compound it will take time to do write the bracket in bracket as well in chat box i would like uh, to write to you i would like you to write the name of the compound also after uh, uh, you are going to react this with na first you are going to react this with na so you know that this sodium will be directly going to the uh, this directly going to the, uh, to at the place of hydrogen so what you will be getting i'm going to write the bond line structural formula so this i'm going to write like this three carbon is done now the fourth carbon and the fifth carbon and this oh i'm going to write it here and i told you this hydrogen's place will be replaced by n now you are going to react this with ch3i that is the preparation of ether if you remember preparation of ether this will have negative this will have positive this will have positive this will have negative so it will be attacking here and the b product that you will be getting is this o O is here and CH3 as well is here. And now you are going to react this with hydrogen iodide plus minus. And then you can see here it will be minus and there will be plus. So this plus will be going directly to this. So you will be getting again an alcohol that is OH and then you will be getting CH3I. So always remember that this blue color solution in vector mayor test is given by 2 degree alcohol, 2 degree alcohol. So this is your D and this is your C and this is your B and this is like this. Okay. Hmm. Is that clear everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Now I'm going to give you the last question. Then we will move to the chemical equilibrium. Almost every day, uh, every day is not every reason, but we have since very less time left. You are going to treat this with NaOH and then <clears throat> you are going to treat this with, after NaOH you are going to treat this with CH3Cl, you will be getting A. After this you are going to treat this with OH. OH. Can anyone tell me the name of this compound, common name? Can anyone tell me? Then you will be getting B. This is your B. So glycogen. Glycol. Very good. Then you are going to treat this with HNO3 in the presence of H2SO4 then you will be getting C. After getting C, you are going to treat this with tin in the presence of HCl. And after getting uh, reacting with this, you will be getting D. And you are going to treat this with NaNO2 in the presence of HCl at zero degree centigrade. Then you will be getting E. And after getting E, you are going to treat this with warm water, warm H2O, then you will be getting F. And after getting F, you are going to treat this with HCl in the presence of H2O. Then you will be getting <laughs> Please do follow.
Okay, we are you done with this? <laughs> MZ Rehan, are you there? So, are you able? Uh, uh, have you solved any one of this part? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, okay, no problem. See, I'm going to explain it. So everyone has written the uh, reaction. So I'm going to write over right here. So there is plus, there is negative. You should remember that this NA will be always replacing the H. So what you will be getting first, you will be getting this O negative NA positive and the rest part will be as it is. This is the first reaction that is taking place for NaOH. Then CH3Cl, you can see this is plus, this is minus. So this CH3 plus will be going at O negative and the formation of an ether at that place will take place. So you can see O is here, CH3 will be replacing Na and the rest part will be as it is. Now this is your glycol. So the reaction of Nucleophilic addition elimination will take place. That means hydrogen from here, hydrogen from here, two hydrogen and one oxygen will be removed. That means kettle formation will be taking place. So you can see all the part will be as it is. OCH3 is here, but you can see this is your CH3 and <clears throat> this will be divided in this. This carbon will be making bond with this two oxygen and the rest part will be as it is. This will be your B. This is your B. So this is your A in which two reactions take place. Then you got B. After getting B, you are going to treat this B with H2SO4 in the presence of HNO3. Then there will be generation of an electrophile that is NO2+. plus. So this NO2 plus will be attacking directly at para position because it will be a stable and major product with it will be here. So I'm going to write it like this CH3 and then O is there, <coughs> O is there. And this will be as it is OCH3. And then <coughs> this you are going to treat this with SN in the presence of HCl. That means the reduction of nitro group to convert it into <coughs> I mean, so you can see this NO2 will be converted into amine like this. And Eleni, you can call it this. But there are other group that is attached OCH3. And this part is as it is like this O, O, and like this. After this, you are going to treat this with NaNO2 in the presence of HCl. That, <coughs> that means formation of Benzene diazonium will take place. This NH2 will be converted into benzene diazonium. So I'm going to convert this into N2 plus Cl minus and the rest part will be as it is. The rest part will be as it is. So there was O, there was O and this will be as it is. Now you are going to treat this with warm H2O. Warm H2O, what it will do? <coughs> it will again... Uh, wait a minute, warm H2O, what it will do? It's very simple, warm H2O, there will be formation of this part. Okay. Okay. So with the help of warm, uh, warm H2O, what will happen here? There will be broken, this will be broken and hydrogen will be added here. With the help of H2O, we have two part H plus and OH minus and OH will be here. And again, hydrogen will be here and OH will be here as it is. Now, wait a minute. Wait Sir, a minute. OH group wait will attach a minute. at the position. If you are going to treat this, 
with warm H2O, this, yeah, got it. This benzene diazonium chloride will be converted into OH. This benzene diazonium chloride will be converted into OH, warm H2O. So this N2 plus Cl minus will be converted into OH and the rest part will be as it is. After this, if you are going, going to treat this with H2O in the presence of HCl, then this bond will be broken. Hydrogen will be added here. OH here, hydrogen will be added here, OH here. So this will be the byproduct that you will get again, the glycol and this part you can see will be like this, OH is here, OCH3 is here. And then you can see at this carbon, two OH group will be added. But always remember that on a single carbon, two OH group is unstable. So what will happen? H2O will be eliminated from here. And the final product that is G that you will get will be this. The OHCH3 will be this. And this will be again converted into. So this is your G product. MJ, KV, Priya, Hamza, Adriel, and Rehan. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes. Just let me know so that I will just uh, change the slide and move to the chemical equilibrium. Are you done with this? Done, sir. Okay. Just wait a minute, please. Please bring in. So can, uh, can everyone see the stream? Yes, sir. Okay. So here is your equilibrium. Actually, there is a two chapter in this. The first one is chemical equilibrium. And the second one is ionic equilibrium. We will try to cover this part today. Chemical equilibrium. Very easy. First of all, <clears throat> I'm going to tell about this, this chemical equilibrium. So I'm going to tell you this equilibrium is of two types. The first one is physical equilibrium. And the second one is chemical equilibrium. Chemical equilibrium. Physical equilibrium, that means you are going to deal with the physical state. That means uh, H2O in solid going to convert into H2 in liquid. So this is your physical equilibrium. If you are going to ask about the chemical equilibrium, that means chemical reaction will be taking place. That means you can see H2 in gaseous state reacting with I2 in gaseous state. That is going to give you 2HI in gaseous state. So this is your chemical equilibrium. <clears throat> now, this equilibrium is also of two types. One is homogeneous equilibrium. And another is heterogeneous equilibrium. Homogeneous equilibrium, that means an equilibrium which has same state throughout the reaction, which has same state throughout the reaction. That is known as homogeneous equilibrium 
as you can see this is your homogeneous equilibrium but when you are going to take uh, talk about the heterogeneous equilibrium that means uh, an equilibrium wait a minute here yeah. an equilibrium which is in different physical state as for example we can take this uh, cso3 is there in solid state and if you are going to heat it it will be converted into cao solid plus co2 gas so as you can see the equilibrium or the reaction in which different physical state present that is your heterogeneous and same physical process uh, physical state present that is homogeneous equilibrium always remember that this equilibrium will be achieved only in closed vessel that means basically it's a very common <clears throat> thing in this and in open vessel you cannot achieve any equilibrium because equilibrium that means rate of reaction you can see equilibrium that means reactant is converting into product as well as product is also converting into reactant and if any one of them is in gaseous state and the container or vessel is open that gas will be out from the vessel and equilibrium will not be achieved is that clear yes yes now i'm going to talk about some of the characteristic of equilibrium state so first of all <clears throat> i'm going to tell about the concentration of a reactant and product concentration of reactant and product constant it becomes constant at equilibrium we are talking about a situation that is at equilibrium concentration of reactant and product constant with respect to time it doesn't change that means it is at equilibrium mm -hmm. then we are going to talk about the rate of reaction rate of reaction that means rate of forward reaction will be equal to rate of backward reaction that means the rate at which rate of forward reaction i didn't write it here please do write it here that means uh, the rate at which reactant converting into the product that should be equal to the rate at which product converting into reactant so these are some characteristic of the equilibrium and the third which is very important equilibrium is dynamic in nature equilibrium is dynamic in nature that simple that means basically equilibrium uh, is dynamic they are in motion uh, product into reactant reactant into product is that clear yes okay i'm going to ask you a question which of the following is correct which of the following is or are correct i'm going to draw some graph and here you can see <laughs> can everyone see the screen uh, have you written the question yes or no yes sir okay yes, now the question is started first of all i'm going to uh, draw this graph for rate versus time rate versus time and this is basically the reaction is like this the it is overlapping here for the second one it is like this and it is also between rate versus time please draw it and then comes to the next it is also between rate versus time and it is 
like this. <clears throat> then comes the next, that is concentration versus time. And the graph repeated itself like this and this. So yeah, that is a straight line after some time. Then comes your the next graph. That is like this, and they are overlapping on each other. And then comes your this graph. So let me. Uh, which of the following are correct? If no, wait a minute. If the reaction is at equilibrium, basically this graph is for equilibrium. Just let me know which one of the following is uh, is or are correct. So I slide it down or slide it up accordingly. Just let me know. Can you slide down? This is also concentration versus time. Basically, there are three uh, graph for rate versus time and three graph for concentration versus time. Now you need to decide whether which one is correct for equilibrium. This is your sixth graph. This is your fifth graph. This is your fourth graph. This is your third graph. And I'm going to slide it up. This is the second graph and this is the first graph. What do you think? And it will be solved on the basis of the uh, concept that I just gave you. Just wait a minute. Please do solve it. Wait a minute. Please do solve it. Anyone have solved yet? Okay, there is a chat which I can see. Only sixth graph, graph is correct. A and F are true. F that means A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, see. This question is completely based upon the two characteristic, three characteristic, basically two characteristic that I told you. And that is at equilibrium, concentration of reactant and product constant with respect to time. First of all, you are going to decide this. First of all, you are going to decide this. If I have a written like this, and if I have written like this, that means the one which is coming from up to the down, that is for a reactant, and the one which is going from zero to up, that is for product. Everyone knows that. You have studied this graph in chemical kinetics, right? Okay, so at equilibrium, the concentration of reactant and product are equal. That means constant, basically. You can see this is your for reactant, this is for product, this is for reactant, this is for product, this is for reactant, and this is for product. And if you are going to read the graph, after some time, it becomes constant with respect to time. That means the fourth graph is correct, D graph is correct. After some time, this graph is between concentration versus time. This graph also tells you that after some time, it becomes constant. They are equal, that is another thing, but they are constant. They become constant, that means this is also true. You can say, after some time, this is also constant. This, this becomes also constant with respect to time. That means this all three graph for concentration versus time at equilibrium are correct. correct. Have you got it, MJ? PD? Yes, sir. Okay. Now come to the rate. What about rate? So I have written a point about rate that is 
at equilibrium a rate of forward reaction should be equal to the rate of backward reaction and you can see this is for rate of forward because going from reactant to product and this is for rate of backward and in this case only rate of forward becomes equal to rate of backward after some time that means it is correct but in this this is your rate of forward and this is your rate of backward which has different value it doesn't becomes equal that's why this is wrong and also if you are going to check this part this is also wrong is that clear is that clear everyone yes sir okay can you change the slide yes sir okay now see there is a topic that is um, what we say equilibrium constant equilibrium constant you have heard of this equilibrium constant this is of two types this is of two types kc for concentration and kp for also uh, this is also equilibrium constant but it is for pressure that means gaseous state generally so if you have given any type of <laughs> aa plus bb that will be giving you wait a minute let me take a good example like this h2 in gaseous state plus I2 in gaseous state, that will be giving you 2HI in gaseous state, 2HI in gaseous state. <clears throat> so, oh, wait a minute. Uh, everyone is able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So, if you are going to put the value, uh, write the value of Kc, Kc will be equal to the concentration of product upon concentration of reactant. Like this is your HI, so I'm going to write HI and whatever is its stoichiometric coefficient that will be written on the power. Then come to this. You can see then product multiplication and look at the constant uh, uh, stoichiometric coefficient one and one. So the power will be one and one. You have seen it for KP. You just need to write the partial pressure of product first the way you just did only the difference is this square bracket represents concentration and this p represents the pressure since in a container more than one substance is present we call it partial pressure so there will be a square and then comes your partial pressure of h2 and then comes your partial pressure of i2 is that clear whatever is the whatever is the coefficient that will come into power okay Now, the next thing that is very important, if you have given, can anyone tell me the expression for CaCO3 in solid, CaO in solid plus CO2 in gaseous state? Can anyone tell me? solids yeah if anyone have written like this kc is equal to cao and you can see the value is one here and if you have written co2 the value here is one and if you are going to write caco3 value is one it will be wrong because the <laughs> active mass or this concentration for pure solid and pure liquid that will be equal to 1. That's why we don't write solid and pure liquid. This will be neglected. This will be neglected. And hence, Kc will be only equal to CO2. In the same way, very good, MJ. Kp will be equal to PCO2. Is that clear? You have to remember this. This is very important. 
Can you change the slide? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now the next, which is also very important, a relation between. KC and KP, KC and KP. You can see. Uh, can anyone tell me the formula of KC and KP? KV. Krishna. Okay, I'm going to write it. Kp is equal to Kc Rt raised to the power delta Ng. What is this? Delta Ng. So delta Ng is very easy. Delta Ng is basically number of moles of gaseous product. That means whatever is in gaseous state only, not in liquid and solid, not in aqueous. Minus number of moles of no wait minus number of moles of gaseous reactant minus number of moles of gaseous reactant so if i'm gonna ask you a question that simple tcl5 is gonna convert itself into tcl3 which is in gaseous state plus cl2 in gaseous state and this is also in gaseous state can anyone tell me the value of delta ng Very good. So what you just have done, uh, this is your one mole. This is also your one mole. Total moles of the product, that is two in gaseous state, minus total moles of the product, uh, total, mole, uh, total number of moles in reactant, that is one. So delta Ng will be equal to one. Can anyone tell me the value of delta Ng here? You can see total number of moles in product is two, and total number of moles in reactant is one plus one, that is equal to two that will be equal to zero is that clear now if you are going to apply this if you are going to apply this delta n basically no wait a minute yeah if delta ng equals to zero if delta ng equals to zero like this and you are going to apply in this kp is equal to kc rt raised to the power delta ng as a value zero so Kp will be equal to Kc. Whatever, uh, anything which has power 0 will be equal to 1. So whenever delta Ng equals to 0, Kp will become equal to Kc. Now, if Kp, if delta Ng greater than 0, like PCL5, so Kp will be equal to Kc into Rt raised to the power delta 1. Because in PCL5, if you have seen, and here kp greater than becomes kc greater than kc because as you can see kp you will get the value of kp after after multiplying kc with something so kp will be greater than kc <clears throat> now if delta ng will be lesser than zero that means in negative like if i'm gonna take an example of n2 plus 3h2 these both are in gaseous state is giving you 2nh3 which is in gaseous state so delta ng value, the value of the number of moles of the product 2 and the value of the number of moles of the reactant 2, 3 plus 1, that is 4, that is equal to minus 2. So you will be getting Kp is equal to Kc, Rt raised to the power delta ng, which has a value minus 2. And after solving it, you can get it Kc, Rt raised to the power square. And here, if you are going to solve it, Kc will be equal to Kp into Rt raised to the power 2. And hence, from here, if delta Ng less than 0, that means Kp lesser than, that means Kp lesser than Kc or Kc greater than Kp. Is that clear? Yes. Is that clear, everyone?
can you change the slide yes sir okay the last topic for today is characteristics of equilibrium constant characteristics for equilibrium characteristics not for characteristics of of equilibrium constant <laughs> see what happens here <clears throat> if you have a reaction a that is giving you any type of reaction that is giving you b and it has an equilibrium constant k and if you are going to multiply by this uh, multiply this reaction with any number with any number in the whole equation this new reaction will have an equilibrium constant k dash that will be equal to whatever is the equilibrium constant of the old reaction raised to the power of the number that is multiplied this is very important and it on this there has been question that asked so many times simple if you have a reaction and that kc has been given and you are going to multiply with a number or anything in that old reaction then you will be getting a new reaction and that kc will be equal to the kc of the old reaction raised to the power number so this is the first characteristic second uh, okay if you have this a going into b which has equilibrium constant k now if the question has been asked what will be the new kc or the kc for the reverse the reaction so for the reverse reaction whatever is the kc uh, for the original reaction it will be inverse of the previous one it's also very easy it will be inverse just take an example if you have h2 plus i2 in gaseous state and 2hi is given and its kc is given as its kc is given as 8 and now i'm going to ask you a question what will be the what will be the kc for this reaction what will be the kc for this reaction so just look at the reaction and you can see this reaction is reversed of the previous one so the kc for this will be 1 by 8 is that clear yes now yes. you can see for this i'm going to give you an example that is h2 plus o2 that is giving you 2h2 i'm going to balance it just balance it whenever you are going to do it and it has a kc that is equal to 4 and now it has been asked that uh, what is the kc for this half o2 and then h2 now if you look at the equation you can see 2h2 was there now h2 is here 1 o2 is there half o2 is there 2h2 is there and h2 is there that means it has been multiplied by half so the kc for this reaction will be this is your fourth whatever is the kc of the old reaction it will be power of the whatever uh, whichever number it has been multiplied it will be in power and you will be getting are you getting my point everyone yes sir okay last but not the least if you are getting this a a that uh, from a you are getting b from b you are getting c this has a k1 and this is k2 and there is a reaction you can see this is very easy this is the third one you can see from a you are getting b and b uh, from b you are getting c and there is a reaction that is directly giving c from a and its kc will be equal to the multiplication of the sequential reaction multiplication of the sequential reaction are you getting my point yes or no yes sir yes. please do write it <clears throat>